Antibodies are macromolecules produced by the cells of our body and the cells of other organisms, and they serve a protective function, so they are part of the immune system of that particular organism. So whenever a pathogenic agent, some type of infectious agent, for example a bacterial cell, makes its way into that organism, that organism responds by using its immune system to basically produce these special molecules we call antibodies. And what an antibody is, it's basically this very highly specialized type of protein that has a high affinity for a specific type of pathogenic antigen. Now, what exactly is an antigen? Well, an antigen is any type of molecule that comes from that infectious agent that invaded that body. So, an antigen could be, for example, a sugar molecule, a polysaccharide that came from that uh, infectious agent. It could also be a nucleic acid or it can be a protein. And in this lecture, we're going to assume our antigen is a protein. Now, how exactly does the binding process between an antibody and an antigen actually take place? Well, in our body, we have five categories of antibodies, and antibodies are also known as immunoglobulins, and that's because immuno means it's part of our immune system, and globulin means the spherical shape, the globe-like shape of that particular antibody. So, immunoglobulin G is one of the five different categories of antibodies that we have inside our body, and the shape of immunoglobulin G is shown here. So, immunoglobulin G consists of four polypeptide chains. Two of these chains are large and we call them heavy chains, they're the purple ones, and the other two are light chains, they're shown in blue. So these blue chains are connected to the purple chains by disulfide bonds, and these two heavy chains are connected to each other also by disulfide bonds as shown by these red bonds. Now, on that antibody, we have a specific region known as the antigen binding site, and the antigen binding site contains a specific sequence of amino acids that has a high affinity for that antigen. Now, if these are the antigens, the antigens also contain a sequence of amino acids that basically bind to that antigen binding site of the antibody. So, Every antigen contains an epitope, which is a specific sequence of amino acids that binds onto the antigen binding site of that immunoglobulin of that antibody. Now, once that binding process takes place, we form the antibody antigen complex. Now, what takes, pla uh, what takes place next? Well, once this binding process takes place, it elicits a series of different responses by our immune system. And one way that our immune system responds is by using a special type of immune cell known as a plasma cell to basically manufacture and produce antibodies that bind to that specific antigen that the antibody was bound to. So if this is our anti uh, if this is our antigen that the antibody is bound to, then the plasma cells will produce more antibodies that will bind to this specific antigen. Now, oftentimes what happens is, so Let's, let's talk about these plasma cells for a moment. So, the thing about plasma cells is, any individual plasma cell will only produce a single type of antibody. So, we have this one-to-one -one correlation between the plasma cell we're talking about and the antibody that it produces. So, it only produces a single type of antibody. Now, the thing about antigens is, many antigens contain many epitopes, so many regions where antibodies can actually be bound to. In this particular case, we only show one epitope, but in this case, we show one, two, three different types of epitopes. And the plasma cells of our body realize that, and our immune cell, what it does to basically create a more effective response is, once the antibody antigen complex is formed, that signals different types of plasma cells 
to proliferate and form more plasma cells and these different types of plasma cells begin to produce different types of antibodies that might have a slightly different type of mass and slightly different type of property but all these antibodies produced will bind to that same type of antigen and these are known as polyclonal antibodies so polyclonal simply means we have poly so many different types of plasma cells and so we produce many different types of antibodies but all these antibodies will still bind to that same type of antigen the only difference is they will bind to different locations on that antigen that's what we mean by polyclonal antibodies so this binding process takes place it tells our plasma cells which types of antibodies to produce it tells them exactly what type of epitopes are found on that antigen and then the different types of plasma cells produce let's say antibody one two and three and then antibody one binds onto epitope one as shown here antibody two binds onto the second epitope as shown here and the third one binds to this third epitope as shown here so these three antibodies are our polyclonal antibodies so many antigens have several apito uh, epitopes polyclonal antibodies are a mixture of these different types of antibodies which have slightly different properties that all bind to that specific antigen but they bind to different locations to different epitopes on that particular antigen now how do we produce polyclonal antibodies for example if i'm a biochemist in a laboratory how can i produce these polyclonal antibodies and actually study them well it turns out that it's not that difficult to produce these polyclonal antibodies so basically we take some type of organism with a functioning immune system for example a mouse and we inject that mouse with our fluid that contains those antigens for example one type of antigen is 2,4-dinitrophenol so we can inject 2,4-dinitrophenol into the mouse into the blood of the mouse by using a syringe so we inject once we wait three weeks we inject the second time we wait three weeks and after a total of six weeks we take another syringe and we draw blood from that mouse now that blood will now contain the polyclonal antibodies against that antigen against the 2,4-dinitrophenol and now we can use the different types of purification techniques that we spoke about previously to basically isolate and study the polyclonal antibodies for example we can undergo cell fractionation and differential centrifugation to basically isolate all the proteins from that blood mixture and then we can use some type of purification technique for example we can use affinity chromatography and gel electrophoresis to basically isolate those polyclonal antibodies and study them so we see that it's not that difficult to actually isolate and form these polyclonal antibodies now in the next lecture we're going to discuss something called monoclonal antibodies and those are actually difficult to synthesize it took us a while to basically realize how we can synthesize monoclonal antibodies as we'll see in the next lecture